I, I, I want to take a picture like this, but he's got my phone. <laughs> I'll take it. Huh? Hey, I wore the shirt. He gave me the shirt. <laughs> I like this shirt sometimes. Go put you on your back, man. Force you to look up. That got a testimony, man. Um, my father, I know that the program, man, um, that stuff y'all been through, man, addiction, you know, I share that story. I shared it with um, Bill. I know I shared it with my brother. I don't like sharing too much, but I'm used to it now. When I was young, it was hard for me to share it, you know, so now I can um, really share the story, you know what I mean? My father was really serious about drugs, man. He was, I don't want to get emotional because it's really deep, you know I mean, so, but I ain't, He's really shooting me, he was on drugs real bad, whatever. He was on drugs, and he was crazy, man. And he's persecuting me. He's prosecuting me, whatever. He just come in the house, middle of the night, my brother's sister, wake me up in the middle of the night, and take me in the room with my, with my mother, whatever, because he was, like, sick. He was, because he'd been traumatized by his father, so he was really sick, man. He was damaged, so he used to grab me up, take me in the room with my mother, because I was a mama boy. I always go with it. He, like, ask me where we went. Where y'all go? Where y'all go? I'm like, we went to the store. He's like, no, you didn't. You went to see another man. He's, and he made me lie. And I used to say, yeah, I was three, four years old. He did for years, though. He's, and I used to like, shoot another man. So he would beat her in front of me. Beat my mother in front of me. And then, you know what I mean? Then when I got 12 years old, whatever, um, you know, that, you know, he was on, um, he used to do drugs. He looked around the house looking for another man, looking for my mother. She right there. And then he wound up killing her eventually. You know, he stabbed her to death. You know what I mean? I, I, I ran the room. When I ran the room, Last time I seen her, um, you know, my mother ran behind me. She came behind me, and he, he ran behind me. My mother said, go to bed. She said, oh, say, I'll go to bed. And my father came behind her. He threw her in the bed, and he started stabbing her to death, whatever. And, um, and um, but I forgave them. Went to see him in um, jail. I don't know why the guy put me through that, but I forgave them because when I seen him uh, in jail, whatever, I never questioned him. I never asked him about it enough. I never said nothing to him about it. I never, because I see him, you know what I'm saying, I just, God just made me, you know what I'm saying, had a love for him, whatever. Because when I was young, he threw me against the wall, like, we all been, I seen eyes, it was like demons. And the last time he did it, I seen like a scary little boy. I said, leave me alone. But God gave me strength for him. He, he jumped. He never did it to me again. So um, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible um, is um, Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 12, verse 4, and um, Genesis chapter 3. 15, whatever, he can bruise your head, whatever. And I said, the enemy used him because he must know there was something in me, whatever. You know what I mean? So and that's how I became healed my father because, like, my father was the dragon to me. And I said that the enemy must use him. He's seen that in him. Like, persecute this one. All my brothers and sisters, get this one. Get this child right here, whatever. So that helped me, when I seen that, it helped me heal him. It helped me on, on forgive him. Help him forgive him, whatever. So... And eventually he came home, and he, and he drunk himself to death, and he, um, he died in 2012, whatever, because the memory killed him. So that's why, um, so the Lord's with me, and the Lord's with y'all, Amen. you know. He's before you, he's behind you, he's inside of you, he's around you, he's with you, he's in you. And um, leave the enemy no room to come in. The enemy have no room to come in, but one way. It's under your feet. That's why I wore the mama. You know Kobe Bryant? Like Kobe Bryant mamas. I had them like six years, my like fifth time wearing them. They mamas, they like the serpent up here. Because in Romans 16 and 20 it said that, And God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. Surely the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So that's why I wore them. Let's crush his feet. Let's pray. Lord, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, God, Father. We just pray that your word come forth, Lord, Father. We pray in the name of Jesus. Open their mouth, Lord, Father. We pray this word come out of me, Lord, Father. Come through me, Lord, Father. From you, Lord, Father. Speak for me, Lord, Father. Speak to me and speak to everyone in here, dear Lord, Father. We thank you, God, Father. Let's change the mindset of what's going on in the atmosphere, dear Lord. And we just pray right now, Lord, Father, that you crush the enemy here tonight, Lord, Father, so we can leave out of here not the same. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So this is my, one of my favorite truth. Galatians chapter 4, verse 28 to 31. Galatians chapter 4, verse 28 to 31, just four verses. 
Galatians chapter 4, verse 28, 31. Galatians chapter 4, verse 28, 31, 28, 29, 30, 31. Verse 28. Now we, brother, as Isaac was, are children of promise. Say again. Now we, brother, as Isaac was, are children of promise. Was. Who Isaac was, that's who you are now, children of promise. So there's a promise on your life. You are in the promise of God. It belongs to you. God's promise is real. He always comes through for his faithful children. Isaac was born from a promise. He was born from a promise. There's a promise on your life from Sarah in her old age. Sarah was old in her old age, whatever. If she thinks she couldn't have children, she didn't think she had none. The Bible was worthy to have none. She believes she thinks that God passed on her, but. God promised her in her old age that she's going to have a child. Galatians 18 and 10. And she did the God power. It was Isaac. Isaac was birth, was born dependent on God power. Your life, our life is dependent on God power. Not no one else, God power. Just like Sarah. So God going to birth something out your life, out your situation. It don't matter how I look. It don't matter what's going on. God made a promise on your life. God made a promise, so he's going to come through. Your life is worthy for God's promise. You are enough for God. You're still in God's promise. Let God work it out. Just wait in the Lord. Ain't nothing too hard for the Lord. I don't care how I look. Nothing too hard for the Lord. No matter how bad it look, how your life look, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. There's a promise. Be faithful in it. Stand on it. We are the promise of God. We are the children. But we must be obedient. We must be obedient. In Genesis 26, 1 and 5, there was a famine land. You know that the famine land back in Isaac's days, and Abraham had famine too. God told, God told Isaac, stay in the land. He with them. He's going to bless his descendants. He's going to give them all the land. To so stand here, dwell in this land. In verse 5, the key word, isn't it? but Abraham obeyed God's voice and kept his commandment. So your situation, no matter how bad it looks, you probably feel discouraged. You probably feel discouraged sometimes, your situation. You probably have a famine in your life. I go through famines. I'm in one now. That's why I stood out to me, whatever. I was in the family, a dry place in my life. It looked messy. My place was dry. But listen, God said, dwell there, you dwell there. If he ordered you there, you dwell in that land. If you're in a situation, your life is bad, if he ordered you there, dwell in there. Because he promised you. I had a situation now, whatever. I'm going to drive, look for a job. It's hard for me. My wife said, what's going on, whatever. I was going to school, whatever, getting a psychology degree, whatever. But it's real tough for me to get a job. I'm personally training, and it's so hard for me right now to get a job, personally training, whatever. I right, what's going on? I'm in the dry land, whatever God said. Just dwell in there, be faithful to it. He with me, trust him, and I'm believing in his word. You who are Isaac was, the children of promise, doesn't matter. I don't care. God promised you something, be faithful to it. You will be blessed in your situation. It's going to come to an end. It will. It's going to come to an end. You got to be faithful in it. But remember, like verse 5 said, we got to keep his commandment. We keep his word because commandment draw you to the promise. It's his commandment, keeping his word, believing his word. The promise is for those who keep God's word and his commandment. You can't live in sin and expect God's promises. The commandment gets you there. You've been to Israel. I know y'all got your little Bible. I know y'all been to Israel. You promised to Israel. But they were disobedient. What happened? He killed the fathers off, and the sons went in. That's why it's important. Your obedience in his word is important. So be faithful. Don't doubt. Don't get discouraged. I'm talking to me. Don't get discouraged. Trust God. Wait in the Lord. And let me tell you something. It's going to happen. 
Verse 29. But as he who was born according to the flesh didn't persecute him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. Key word. Even so it is now. The children of promise. Now since you are the children of promise, which is the prophecy on your life, this is why some of you get persecuted. The enemy always trying to take you down because you had a promise on your life. Guess what? The enemy don't like you. There's someone hating on you. And we all know his name. It's the enemy, Lucifer, Satan, whatever, he's hating on you. But as he who was according to the, born according to the flesh, then persecute him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. Who was born according to the flesh? Who was born according to the spirit? It's Abraham's two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. And 29, and on Genesis 21, verse 8 and 9, so the child grew and was worried, and Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was worried. And Sarah saw the son of Haggai, an Egyptian, whom she had born to Abraham, scuffering. This key word is grow and scuffer. Isaac was born according to the spirit. Ishmael was born according to the flesh. Your spirit always grown, trying to grow, and the flesh always persecuting your spirit. It's the enemy. It's the devil Persecute your spirit because he don't want it to grow as it growing. Because Isaac was on, Abraham, Abraham, had, Abraham had Ishmael when he was about, I think, 86. And he had Isaac when he was 100. So that's a 14-year difference. And it said that when he was growing, so he was around like two or three years old. So that made Ishmael, what, 16, 17 years old. Imagine a 17-year-old boy persecuting the, um, a three-year-old child. As it growing, but when the enemy see you growing, if you depressed, hang about you. If you depressed, anxiety, suicide, you stuck there. But when we see you growing in Christ, that's we coming at you. Your spirit, Isaac, your flesh, Abraham. This is what the enemy does: persecute your spirit as it grows, because he doesn't want you to grow. He mock you. Laughter. That's what it mean. Is the enemy mocking you? Is he saying you ain't worthy? Is he in your head in the middle of the night when you're alone? Saying stuff you've been through? He's my father head. Is he telling you that you ain't worthy? God ain't going to do nothing for you because you're addictive? You've been on drugs? Your thoughts you've been having? Is the enemy mocking you right now? We want to bond that in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that you get stronger mentally. That when you hear them thoughts, you know that God's with you. That's a lie. Because he'll mock you. He'll trouble you. I've seen it. Because the devil knows. He, he knows what's in you. He knows what's greater than you. He knows what's in you. It's the devil who persecutes you. It's him. Because that's a prophetic word. In Genesis 3 and on 15, it said that I'm going to put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He's going to come bruise your head. So he had the prophetic word. He know it. This is why he persecutes your spirit. Because he don't want Christ to come out of you. How he persecutes your spirit? Because your flesh. Your flesh connects to all this stuff in the world. Your trauma. What you've been through as a child. All your abuse, all your generation curse from your mom and dad, your flesh connected, all that stuff. You know what it does to you? It puts you in depression, anxiety, mental state, feeling hopeless, doubting God, feeling lonely and fear, suicidal, wicked thoughts, mood swings, pains in your body. God, you feel like you're going to die. This is how your spirit gets persecuted by your flesh. Now you can't walk in faith. You ain't trusting God's promises on your life because of that. Because of your mind, it's your mind that keep you from growing. It's your mind that keep your spirit from growing. All that stuff in your head. So I tell you, Galatians 2 and 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lived in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This should be your answer. Verse 30, nevertheless, 
What does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be a hero with the son of the free woman. The bondwoman is Ishmael's mother. The free woman is Isaac's mother. The spirit wants to be free. The flesh is a slave. Are you listening? The spirit wants to be free, but the enemy wants to transfer that around. He wants your spirit to be persecuted by your flesh. He wants your flesh to rule. But the word says that the elder should serve the younger. Your flesh should serve your spirit. Cash out the, cash out the sinful flesh. For the, for the son of the bond one should not be a hero with the son of the free one. Your flesh cannot be a hero with your spirit. The flesh has to die. Because always persecute your spirit. And all the flesh want to do is sin, sin, sin. But the spirit, God wanted to rule. The spirit, he wanted to rule your life and other lives. But as long as that flesh rule is taking over, it's impossible. So I tell you again, Galatians 2 and 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This should be your answer. I write it down twice. (laughs) Verse 31. So, then, brother, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. You are not a child of a slave woman. You are a child of a free woman. We was born in sin, yes, but we don't have to live there no more. Know why? Because of Jesus who died for us and our sins. You are not slave to sin because of Jesus who died for our sins. So we don't have to live there no more. You are free because of Jesus. Your sins don't own you because of Jesus. Your sins don't control you anymore. Your life because of Jesus. This is a promise on your life. It's coming. Be faithful. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God the Father on you. Third time, Galatians 2 and 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lived in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Your life isn't yours anymore. It belongs to Jesus. Your sins and your death are not yours. It's Jesus. Because we've been joined with him. This is your answer. I wish that if I was a little older, I could have saved my mother and father. So, like my brother said, whatever, I don't know how to be, I don't know how to be fake. I know that people inside are struggling. I seen it firsthand. So I say, God did that to me so I could just see the people. So it breaks my heart when I see like, people from our church, when I see people come in, they're broken. But Jesus is our Savior, and they need to know that. And we need to know that. They die for us. He's with us. Enemy had no authority over our life. He got to ask God. He got to get permission. And sometimes God puts you through that to test you. He puts you through famines. He puts you through wilderness. He puts you through situations that you got to get burned. You got to get stuff off of us. There's stuff in us that need to come out. There's stuff deep down in us. That's love. When you're in the wilderness... You're in a famine. You think you're suffering? That's love. Thank God he put you through that. I know it's hard. You might let like, well, I'm going through, but you should thank God that he put you through that. That means he loves you because he knows something in you that could destroy you. And some people can't go through it. Why well, I'm going through this? Why well, I'm going through this? Whatever. Thank God that he got me going through this. Because to build me, make me strong, and to get that stuff in me out of me. Because enemy plan is seeding us. And the only person to get out was Jesus. That's what he did to Samaritan woman. It's something inside of us that we're thirsting off of. But Jesus 
is our water, life living water. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you, God, for this moment, dear God. I just pray, God, Father, thank you for being our life. We was once dark, dear God, Father, but use our light, God, Father. And darkness could not comprehend you, Lord, Father. As long as we got you in our life, you in our heart, darkness could not comprehend. It cannot move in. So we pray, God, Father, when we get discouraged or we get attacked, we pray, Lord Father, remember you is with us. The enemy might have a weapon, but he have no ammo in it because he's disformed the principality. So we thank you, Lord Father, for what you've done for our life. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your love. We thank you for seeing us, seeing yourself in us. We thank you for the blood of Jesus over our life. Because long we got the blood on us, there's no enemy in hell that could bother us. So we pray right now, God, cover all my brothers and sisters, Lord Father. We want to bind any attacks on their mind that will happen before they got here. And we want to pray that they remember that the Lord is with them. He's before you. He's behind you. He's on the side. He's around you. He's in you. He's with you. So he's all around. So the enemy can't, cannot come in. He, he have no room in your life because of Jesus. He paid for the debt. He paid for your sins. So don't get discouraged. Don't get worried when you're going to something. There's not the enemy. Sometimes God puts you through stuff. So help us be encouraged, Lord Father, that it is you dealing with us because you're a personal God. So if you're a personal God, you ain't spending no time with nobody else. But you is personal. You spend time with me. You spend time with him. You spend time with her. You is a personal God, Lord Father. So if you personal, that means you is with you right here. You personal with me. So why is I'm worried about the enemy? He had no authority because you is with us. So I pray, Lord Father, that we all go in peace. And we know that the head been crushed on Calvary. He got on that cross and he died for us. In Jesus' name, amen.